Thanks for staying with us. So um, before we, we went on a break, I was trying to bring in Uti here because Fumi is saying that she doesn't think this is purely economical. So why, I am, uh, why we even decided to talk about this topic? You remember when the xenophobic, um, uh, what's it called, um, drama happened and there was an attack, you know? It was almost immediately. I had seen it firsthand by the Jack on Day, for instance, where something happened like there's an uproar and the next thing, the same people on the street, on the roads, begging you for money, have taken up stones and whatever, smashing into people's windows to steal things from people's cars. I mean, it's a big security risk. Then, even when the xenophobia uh, stuff happened, there was, there was attack on Circle Mall and Novari Mall. The same thing when the NSAS uh, reprisal after the protest, when it happened, the same thing, these same people went to the malls. And I hear that where the circle mall was, it, where the circle mall is built, for instance, it was a, it was a, it was a habitat for, or a, 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 a what's, what's the word I'm looking for now? Where they, where the, a cluster of, um, what's it called, homeless people that used to be there before they moved them out to the other side of the uh, town to, to erect that mall. So, um, how do we even try to, because we don't have time, how do we try to tackle this thing in terms of security? Do we continue to leave them on the street to say, okay, because it is poverty, it is hunger? Because right now, I don't believe it is 100% poverty that is making people to be on the street to beg. So maybe come to Uti, then I'll come to Fumilayo. Yeah, so, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd just like to share an experience. So I think that um, I, saw, I agree with Maureen in terms of this sort of cabal type structure. Uh, I remember when I was young, my sister had um, a store in a very popular market in, um, in Lagos. And on the, on the Express at that market, you used to have them lined up because, you know, the Express had a very wide median. So they almost used to have like sleep there, wake up there and all of that. But it was always the women and children. So I remember one day I went towards the back of the market trying to find the public toilets. And then I see all this, like a huge congregation, like you said, they're always in clusters, right? And I see these same women and children that I saw on the, on the streets, on the middle of the expressway with men. So it's almost like, imagine a family structure and all the men are sat somewhere. And these women and children go out and they bring the money back to these men. Mm -hmm. And what struck me then was the size of the bread in the days of Agege bread, when it was still a heavy loaf. Mm -hmm. And these guys were sat there eating better than the boys who were selling in those stores would be able to eat. And this was all money coming from begging. begging. And I remember coming back to the store and I was talking to somebody else. Uh, and the person said, ah, that's how they are. That is business. They are making money. So there is an economic element to it that some people are capitalizing on this. This is not to say that education and all these other issues are not there. But there, there are people capitalizing on this and making money from it. Okay, so let me come to Fumi. So if we want to draw up a solution to take away beggars from the streets, especially in Lagos, is there even a, is there a roadmap? Can we achieve that? Because now it's almost like they are comfortable. I would rather just beg. You understand? Since I keep, I, I, because I think it's because they have a lot of people that give them the money. That's why they are, they are increasing in numbers. Right? So do you think that there can be a formula to take these people off the streets? Um, while I do not condone begging, because of my experience in working with people at the grassroots, I have seen quite a lot. And I'm glad that you mentioned the other time that Sekumo was said to be home to displaced people and um, homeless people before the structure was erected in it. Um, I realized that um, the, gov the government has displaced a lot of people in Lagos. I work in Makuku. There was a huge battle between the government and the people who lived there because they wanted to displace them. The same thing happened in Otodogame and many people died. For cases like this, for many people who are homeless, um, many countries provide support for them in terms of adequate relocation, shelter, no matter how small. You can't move people off the place that they live because in the first place, they do not have a place to stay. And that is why they stay there. And then you build a thriving mall. Uh, because there are people, and because that is, I think that is what humans do, when there is an opportunity to destroy this place, they will. 
I believe that a good way to curb street begging is to have strong economic economic policies and support for people who live in poverty, for people who are homeless, for people who are displaced. A bulk of people, I, I've met quite a number of beggars. Some of them seem to be in business because that's what they've been doing for years. But some of them also want to leave. Um, a video that we saw recently was a, a Twitter influencer that she placed a drink in the mouth of yes, one of the beggars. The beggar. I'm not sure anyone, anyone wants to continue to go through that day by day. I think we need to have strong economic policies that ensures that homeless people, in the first place, people should be able to get jobs that, that sustain them daily. People should have access to um, employment opportunities, healthcare and education. This would greatly reduce the number of people who live on the street. A huge, um, a huge number of young people who are on the street right now are from the north, and that comes from the Amajiri system. The government of today is doing really um, is doing very little in curbing Amajiri in Nigeria. If the government of the day is able to do something to Amajiri in the north, that is going to curb the number of young people who are begging on the street and migrating to Lagos and to other parts of the country in Nigeria. So I think we need to get this country right. We need to get it going. Countries like Nassau and Sokoto have banned street begging, mm. yet that's had very little effect because um, banning street begging and not um, tackling the root causes of street begging amounts to nothing. So yeah, because what they, did, what they did when they banned them, all of them just the migrated to Lagos. Do you understand? Because now yeah. there's a huge um, population of people coming into Lagos just to be on the streets. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if our government are actually sitting down and just watching these numbers. Because the, the numbers are increasing by the minute. And this is a huge security risk. And it's looking like nobody is, you know, paying attention to this. And I'm already seeing it because any little, um, what's it called? Any little um, 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 noise or something that happens, immediately these same people that are begging you, they turn into monsters and start vandalizing. And, 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 you know, so I don't even know where they will draw the line. But let me come to Uti. Do you have a question? Yes. So, I mean, I'll take a quick comment. Um, so this is from Mofet. Uh, Professor says, yes, the society has failed the nation, but you see people who have the ability to choose a different path decide to go into the profession of begging. This has to be tied to mindset. So um, I think that uh, the idea, or I want to ask, now, one thing that bothers me a lot, and, and in my mind, I want to say this is an educational thing, but one thing that bothers me a lot is you find yourself in this situation where you are homeless, and you're having to beg to sustain yourself. But somehow, you still manage to have a child. What kind of education, or is there anything happening at that grassroots level to really be able to elevate these people? Because, I mean, it's already, the world is already against you, per se, if you want to look at it that way. What is currently happening? Uh, is there anything happening that can even start to, to give some of these people who are able-bodied uh, a way out of this lifestyle? The only people that I know providing support for people who live on the streets, the homeless and the beggars, are non-profits. Many who are struggling for funding, the Lagos State government and all other governments are not providing, as far as I know, any form of support for people who live on the streets. And then that is my bone of contention. NGO, civil society, church, they cannot do it alone. I know many churches who every Sunday they distribute food, they distribute their youth clothes, NGOs raise funds, you know, to buy clothes, to give them food for the day. But if you feed someone for in the morning and in the afternoon, as amazing as it is, they still need to eat in the night and they still need to eat next week. So um, the government so far has not provided any form of support at least that I know of, that is going to sustain and ensure. Of, right? I, I know that Lagos state governments, through the LSEFT program, they provide access to vocational skills training for anyone who is interested. But I also think that a forward-thinking government should ensure that people on these streets, they have access to this information. A lot of these uh, edifice that the government build and say, oh, we train people on vocational skills. For me. Yeah, it's free. You can learn this year. People on the streets do not know. 
also while they are learning these skills they have to feed you know okay. you should you should provide something to support them for okay. like one year or the six months that they would gather the skill and then be able to make money from it for me so so is it for lack of information that you think these people are on the streets i am telling you that i think we these people on the streets begging they've got it to that point where they are comfortable you understand? I'd rather just sit down. I do not agree free money. that everybody on the street is comfortable. I can say like twenty percent. But why do I have this feeling the that they are actually comfortable begging? Because I mean, there there are opportunities. I and let me say this because I think we keep making excuses for this for this thing, and that's why it's growing in numbers. Why would I not? Why would I go and bother myself to go to a farm to go and work and earn money after suffering and sweating in the farm? Let me rather just sit down and beg. You know, that's what I think is happening to us in this country. There are, there are opportunities, I agree, but there are limitations to assessing these opportunities. Okay, for you, I, I, I am homeless person in Lekki. Lagos State Government has built a center for people in Ikeja. When I go back to Ikeja, when I'm learning these skills there, they do not pay me to learn these skills because, of course, they're not supposed to pay me. But while I'm learning tailoring or fashion designing, I also have to eat. I have to sleep somewhere. These are some of the questions that we need to ask ourselves. Some of them also have families. Some people are begging because they are disabled. Some are begging because they have families who are in need and they have to support them at that point. So there are a lot of things happening around it. Um, lack of access to communication things are happening in different parts of of um of the country of the states but people don't even know that they are happening mm -hmm. and many of them are also not sustainable so we all we need to ensure that these people have access to the information we also pro um, provide some sort of reintegration back into the society for them okay. spending one year two years on the streets does something to your psyche because you mix with different kind of people you become Absolutely. immune to different things even your language and your character changes. Mm. So these are some of the things that the government, non-profit, civil society, all need to come together to work on. Absolutely. Um, I've seen like one or two beggars who we worked with and then they've been able to um, move back the trajectory of their life. Okay. It's not always easy. All, right. you know, it's, all these things are not always easy. But I believe that not all of them, it's just a... A small percentage that are used to this life okay many of them want to live a normal life like everyone absolutely all right so thank you so much uh, for me um so uti we're wrapping up the conversation now because we've run out of time so in one minute what would you just say you know will be um maybe f a way forward for taking off streets beggars from the streets it sounds um you know sad to say given all the problems that we have in this country um, it's, it's a shame that a, a key human issue um, or, or a set of human beings within this country, citizens of this country, are, are marginalized to this extent. And, um, you know, in other countries where we see social welfare programs, um, even those programs struggle, you know, where you have structure, where you have, you know, it still struggles because most times the supply cannot meet the demand. Yeah. So, for me, in Nigeria, I say when we think about all the larger issues we have in the economy, everything that is happening, where is the money going to come from? Mm -hmm. Because if we say the government needs to do this, then that money does need to come from somewhere. So there's a, there's a lot of restructuring of the way you know we spend money. I leave that to the economists in, in you know in the country. But I mean, the money has to come from somewhere because these are things that we cannot continue to ignore. Mm -hmm. Their numbers are growing at an alarming rate. Um, and we can't continue to allow it to, to, to continue because at some point when there's no food, then the security issues that we're talking about now will become a reality. Absolutely. And we all don't really want to see that. Um, so, so yeah, so for me, it's, it's what can we really do? What, where, where's the government going to find the money? But they have to. They have, have to, to find the money. I, I, I think I'll, I'll, yeah, absolutely. I'll wrap up saying that every human life matters, right? And if the government is really serious about transforming this nation and building a country where everyone will thrive, this is a major issue that they would have to find the funds to be able to take these children 
off the streets. I mean, very tiny children, you see them running after cars, begging for money. It's not a good sight at all, especially for Lagos, it's not a good sight at all. All right, thank you so much, uh, Fumilayo, and thank you, Uti. Thank you, Mori. So, sorry, Mori sadly had to leave because of her network. Mm -hmm. um, please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 6 a.m. It's been an insightful conversation. Keep all the conversation going on our social media platforms at Way Show Africa 1 on um, Twitter and at Way Show Africa on IG and Facebook as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Never stand begging for that which you have the power to earn. Please, let's stop encouraging people to go on the streets to beg. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening.